Quantum computing is a new paradigm to computing and holds great promise to revolutionize computers as we know them. In this video, we will discuss the fundamental building block of a quantum computer, the quantum bit, also known as the qubit. We will discuss how qubit can be manipulated using quantum logic gates, focusing primarily on the single qubit gates in this video. This includes the Pali X, Y and Z gates, the Automar gate, and the rotation gates. Let's get started. Part 1. Classical versus Quantum Bits and their Logic Gates In classical computing, a bit is the basic unit for computing. It can be in either the state 1 or 0. Bits are used to store data in a computer and to perform calculations. The state labeled as 1 could corresponds physically to a positively charged capacitor, or the on state, while the state labeled as 0 corresponds instead to a negatively charged capacitor, and it's called the off state. Classical bits can be manipulated between the 0 and 1 states using electrically controlled logic gates. Below is the circuit representation of the NOT gate, also known as the inverter, which implements logical negation. In other words, this gate transforms a 0 into a 1 and vice versa. The logical relationship between the input and output of a gate can be summarized in the form of a truth table as shown, which identifies all possible input combinations and the output for each. Quantum bits, or qubit, on the other hand are labeled as ket0 and ket1. The brackets enclosing the 0 and 1 are called kets, which is a notation to represent quantum mechanical states. The ket0 state corresponds physically to the lowest energy state of a two-level system, also known as the ground state. On the other hand, the ket1 state corresponds to the excited state. The energy difference between these states, delta E, needs to be gained or lost in this exact discrete amount in order to change the state from one to the other. Physically, the two-level quantum system can be the spin of electrons confined in quantum dots or that of trapped ions, as shown. Or it could also be the presence and absence of Cooper pairs in superconducting systems, among many other types of qubit platform. We shall defer to future videos the discussion of these various physical implementation of quantum computing. Just like its classical analog, qubit can be manipulated using quantum logic gates. The quantum counterpart of the classical NOT gate is the Pali X gate, which turns the ket0 into the ket1 and vice versa. In what follows, we shall introduce the different types of single qubit gates, their mathematical representation, and its operation on the qubit. We shall defer the discussion of their physical implementation to future videos. Part 2. Qubit as Quantum Superposition State Qubit are fundamentally different from the classical bit. One of the property that sets qubit apart from a classical bit is its ability to be in a superposition of ket 0 and 1. A general qubit state is represented by the ket psi as follows, where psi is a linear combination of ket 0 and ket 1. The numbers a and b are complex valued. The square of the modulus of A and B yields us the probabilities that the system will be in the state ket0 or ket1 respectively. Since they are probabilities, they have to add up to 1, which is also known as the normalization condition. Part 3. Matrix representation of qubit and gates. Mathematically, the 0 and 1 kets can be represented as two-dimensional column vectors as shown. It is straightforward to see that they form an orthonormal basis set which any state vector psi and can be represented as a linear combination of these basis states. We say that 0 and 1 ket span the 2D Hilbert space, which is the vector space of two-dimensional complex-valued vectors, where the qubit live. The quantum logic gates, which operates on the qubit, are represented by 2 by 2 matrices here in denoted by U. 
They are also known as operators in quantum mechanics. Mathematically, the action of the quantum gate on the qubit psi is given by u times the 2 by 1 ket vector. Let's consider two of the most common quantum logic gates, the Pauli X gate and the Audemars H gate. Their matrix representation are as shown. We see that the action of the X gate on the zero ket turns it into one ket. Thus, the Pauli gate is analogous to the inverter. For a general qubit psi, the X gate exchanges the complex coefficients a and b. The Audemars gate, H, on the other hand, when applied to the zero ket, creates a superposition state with equal amplitudes for zero and one kets. The same happens when the H gate is applied to the basis state one, except now with a relative minus sign in one of the amplitudes. When the H gate acts on a general qubit psi, it mixes the components to be an equal weighted sum or difference of the two, as shown. The two resulting bits from the H gate application are also known as the plus and minus kets, which are equal weight superposition of the two basis states. Thus, we see that the H gate brings the qubit into a superposition of the two basis states. Quantum logic gates cannot be any 2 by 2 matrix. They must have two important properties. First, they have to be Hermitian matrices, where the matrix is equal to its own adjoint. The adjoint of a matrix is its transposed complex conjugate. They also have to be unitary, which means the matrix multiplication of the operator with its own adjoint is equal to the identity matrix. The first requirement ensures that the eigenvalues, also known as the observables, are real valued. The observables are measurable quantities, so they must be real in order to have any physical meaning. On the other hand, the second requirement ensures the conservation of probability. In other words, no bits are leaking into or out of the systems. Before we proceed, we would like to add another utility to our toolbox. It turns out that one can faithfully map the qubit state onto a geometrical block sphere representation. In other words, the two complex amplitudes A and B can be mapped onto the geometrical variable theta and phi, where theta and phi are the usual polar and azimuthal angles in spherical representation. The block sphere provides a powerful visualization of the state of a qubit and is a powerful tool for understanding quantum mechanics and quantum computing. You can refer to this video in the same playlist for its derivation. In the block sphere representation, the zero ket will be located at the north pole, while the one ket at the south pole. All states with equal weight superposition of the zero and one kets are located along the equator, as shown. The operation of any single qubit gates can then be represented as mapping from one point on the block sphere to another, as we shall demonstrate in what follows. Part 4. Visualizing the action of quantum gates on bits with block sphere. Armed with the block sphere representation, let's explore the Pauli X gate operation on a qubit. We recall the matrix representation of the X gate, and its operation on 0 and 1 kets. In the block sphere representation, we see that the X gate simply maps the initial qubit state onto the opposite pole, say from 0 ket to 1 ket and vice versa. In the block sphere illustration, we see that the action of the X gate is represented by a rotation of pi with respect to the X axis. This is not an arbitrary choice. Using the definition of the rotation operator for spin one half systems, we can show that the X gate is exactly the same as the rotation of pi with respect to the X axis. In the last step, we have removed the minus I factor because it is just a global phase. Recall that in the block sphere representation, all qubit that differs by a global phase lies at the same point on the surface of the block sphere. Here's another example of the X gate operating on a more general qubit psi. 
Note that the trajectory traces out a half circle in accordance with the pi rotation with respect to the x-axis. In similar fashion, one can also define the y and z Pauli gates as rotation of pi with respect to the y and z axis respectively. For the general definition of the spin one-half rotation matrices, one can also check that these rotations correspond to the Pauli matrices sigma y and z. Their operations are illustrated on the block sphere. The y gate rotates the zero ket by pi with respect to the y axis, ending up as the one ket. Note that a global phase is incurred during the operation, which can be dropped. The z gate rotates the plus ket by pi with respect to the z axis, ending up as the minus ket. Using the general definition of the spin one-half rotation matrices, one can also check that these rotations indeed correspond to the Pauli matrices sigma y and z. Feel free to pause if you would like to inspect the math. Thus, by extension, the Pauli x, y and z gates can be generalized to rotation gates which performs rotation at arbitrary angle theta instead. Their respective matrix representations can be obtained from the general spin one-half rotation matrix. We illustrate here the respective rotation gates operation on the block sphere, with the angle theta equals to 3 pi over 2. By now, we hope that we impress upon you that the single qubit gate operations are just rotations on the surface of the block sphere. We shall end with a last example the Ottomar H-gate. From the matrix form of the H-gate, it is easy to see that the H-gate is a linear combination of the X and Z gates. We seek to find the rotation angle phi and axis n in the spin one-half rotation matrix that yields the H-gate. Expanding out the dot product, and comparing both sides of the equation, we can deduce that the angle phi is equal to pi, and the axis is lying diagonal on the xz plane, as expected by the form of the H matrix. With this, we can illustrate the H gate operation on the block sphere. It is a rotation by pi around the blue axis n which is pointing diagonal in the xz plane. The H gate acting on the zero ket brings it to the plus ket, while its action on the one ket brings it to the minus ket. Two successive applications of the H gate would therefore take the initial zero or one basis state back to its original state, as it would give a rotation of 2 pi around the same axis. We can also verify this through its matrix representation. Recall that the H gate is Hermitian and unitary. Since it is Hermitian, it is equal to its own transpose conjugate. Since it is also unitary, the product of itself with its transpose conjugate is equal to the identity matrix. Therefore, the application of two successful H gates leaves the initial qubit unchanged. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.